this morning Bruce and I have come to Stroud and we're going to start the walk off in Stratford Park we're going to walk down through the town see what we can see see if there's anything to take photographs of uh, and if not then we'll walk through the town and go out to the canal so it's just a, a renovation of a canal that's going on at the moment and hopefully there's some decent shots down there and the weather's a bit grim but I can see patches of blue and I did see the sun earlier so fingers crossed so Stroud obviously is in the Cotswolds, just here. Uh, it gets its name from, uh, there was a bit of marshland at a confluence of two rivers uh, and that bit of marshland was called La Strode and that's where the name Stroud came from. It's another one of those towns that's famous for wool, or used to be famous for wool anyway. Uh, and that's where it sprung up. By all accounts, it's Stroud sits at the meeting of five different valleys. Uh, and obviously a good point for, for selling and marketing and all that kind of stuff. So, what do I know about Stroud? So the first lawn mowers invented in Stroud. Quite a few famous people here. So Keith Allen, Lily Allen have houses around here. Tom Smith of the editors was born here. It's another one of those grey, dull mornings. It's the best of the weekend so far. So we're certainly not going to get any sun dappling through the trees or any, any fantastic photographs like that. might just be coming out. Uh, this week I went over my 50th subscriber so Colin Adams thank you very much for what I know about Stroud, there aren't that many hills, so hopefully there won't be a lot of puffing and panting uh, and not too much sweating going on either, so it should be good. <laughs> well, I always think it's quite useful to have a dog on your vlog because he makes so much more interesting b-roll than just looking at me. So we'll leave the park behind now. That was a quick view anyway, and head down into the town. So it's quite a lot later today than I usually get up and do these vlogs. The reason is I was waiting for it to stop being quite so grey. But it does mean there are going to be lots more people in photographs and videos and I guess traffic noise as well. That's just the way it is.
we're heading out of town now in this kind of grey grim light there wasn't really that much to take photographs of but it was supposed to give you a quick view so hopefully you've got that so we're going to head out now and hopefully be a bit more successful with some photographs head down towards the canal so this is hopefully the first proper photograph of the day I'm trying to take something a little bit edgy here so if you can see that building behind me, I quite like all the different rocks and the, uh, the shapes in them. And then there's a leading line of the canal going towards it and the fence as well. I've put my camera on the side here with the useful Nikon flip out screen so I can see what's going on. It's at F11, I'm focused on the building at the end and see what comes out. Like this composition as well it is quite dark but hopefully the arch there is framing the lock in the background so maybe I'll put it on a long exposure uh, and see what that looks like So the only problem being in any kind of underpass, especially where there's trickling water, is it can be a little bit pungent. Just taking some shots there, trying to get this cog wheel in the front as the foreground and the lock in the background. And bear in mind I don't like heights, look where I've just been stood. So I hope they come out. So those locks are pretty and they're a great architectural feature, historic feature I guess. And the problem is where they're situated the backdrop's a bit grim. Maybe what I should have done is had it on a shorter f-stop, smaller f-stop. And I've only just thought about that now and I can't be bothered to walk back. So, so we're going to carry on walking down this canal path probably for a mile or so and see what we can see I don't exactly know what's happened to the sun but it seems like summertime's over and we've got grey skies
get slightly nervous on these vlogs or video logs, whatever you want to call them. I never know what I'm going to find or if I'm going to even find anything at all. So it's, uh, it's quite a challenge sometimes and it's an absolute relief when you find something that's interesting or at least you can take a photograph of and show your photographic skills. So anyway, as we speak, look what's just come into view. So it's pretty grey, the viaduct itself hasn't got a great amount of contrast and it's got graffiti on it and it's got a bird poo on it <laughs> and loads of plants but I'm going to prove my wares as a photographer and take a decent photograph so I'm going to find a composition. So two tips in one here, one when you've got the camera in the opposite direction and turn the microphone around so it's a directional microphone so it can hear you and the second thing is if you've not used a polarizer before then this is what it's for if you look at the water so in the bottom part of the screen it's quite bright at the moment and if you twist the polarizer around you see it going darker so it takes some of the glare off the water so this composition that I've got set up is quite a simple one really so the water and the towpath are heading towards the viaduct and it's just then a matter of how much of the viaduct you actually want to get into view. So as I was setting up for that shot there I did notice that the wind was rippling the water so what I've done is I've put a little stopper so a six stop ND filter on as well and that's given me a 30 second exposure so hopefully that should flatten out the water ripples and give us a much better shot. So I just added another dimension to that shot. So Bruce came and laid down and he was just in the corner of the shot so I moved back slightly uh, and put him in the frame. The problem is trying to keep a dog still for 30 seconds is quite hard. So what you do is take that 30 second exposure then take all the filters off the front take another shot with the dog in focus and then blend them together in Photoshop so that should come out later on. So this is looking pretty good as well. We've got the slight waterfall here, cascade, the wooden bridge in the background, and the arches behind that. So now I need to find somewhere down there to set up. I suspect this is going to end up with me having wet feet. So it's just a little bit too deep for my shoes. So I'm barefoot now, all oh, for the sake of art, eh? Hopefully when I get to that island over there, I'll be able to set up a decent shot and uh, it'll all be worthwhile. Hopefully you enjoyed that. My feet are soaking and really, really cold.
So I just hopped over the road to the other side of the canal now to see if there are any compositions on this side. I quite like all of these arches. I forgot to make an image out of something like this. I was going to face that way, but there's an obvious problem. However, if you look behind me, it's quite good, dark and moody. So let's have a shot. The main problem photographing underneath a viaduct after it's been raining, there are drips. The viaduct's quite an impressive sight from this side. The only problem photographically is it's got all these cables across and that's going to be a hell of a lot of work in Photoshop but I've taken a shot anyway and we'll see how it comes out. So that's it from Stroud, from me and Bruce. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy the images. If you have and you're not already, how about hitting the subscribe button? Till next time, thank you.